Welcome to anyone watching, it's Craig at mysimpit.co.uk and welcome to part 8 of the front dash build. I've been chipping away at building two full-size multifunction colour displays for the last couple of months and as of this point they're now finished and I've literally just today hardwired them into the simulator and I'm just going to run some operation tests. Let's buckle up. On the left of the screen we have a overall view of the Simpit. In the bottom right of the screen we have a close-up view of the MFCDs. And in the top right of the screen we have a diagrammatical view which is there to show successful inputs as we test them. And this is just sitting in the background as part of this operation test. So we'll start off by testing some of the OSB inputs. Uh, we'll just prep the mavs and we can do a little bit of airborne testing. And with modelling this on the A10C, I'm now testing the additional inputs that would be specific to that aircraft. So via rotary input I can now select it either to be unpowered or in night or day mode. Amongst the extra controls, I can alter display and symbol brightness and video contrast. Within day and night mode, you're able to set certain levels of brightness for each, almost as profiles. We'll get airborne now and we can run a few further tests. Before building these I took some time to think through what I'd want from the displays just to judge whether I could have an off the shelf solution or whether I would actually definitely need to build it. There were five main things I wanted in the MFCDs. These things were that I wanted all of the functionality of the A10 MFCD, so hence needing all of the buttons, that the buttons would be backlit, that the screen would not just be a good quality screen but would be one incorporated and built into the unit, so the unit itself it's integral to and the unit standalone. I wanted it to be interfaced by a keyboard encoder and the screen to be an exported view and that gives me the option should I want to to use it with other simulators. And the last was for it to be as large as I can get to the, the real size. I always like large displays uh, when sort of presenting myself with the information. I know that when I built the radio stack, I went for slightly larger seven segment displays. I did spend a good bit of time having a look at the Thrustmaster MFDs. Um, and to be honest, they look like a good piece of kit, they're good quality, plug and play, so it certainly would have saved a whole heap of time. I think what it really came down to was, of all the things I was looking for in these displays, it was quite important to me that I could have one of a generally a bigger size, so um, I think the Thrustmaster is about 108 by 108 and... By doing it this way, it's allowed it to be a greater screen size. It's about 25% 20, overall extra. The lighting that sits behind the push buttons is cascaded at an even brightness between all of them. The difference that you see in that light transmission through the tactile caps is down to the painting and engraving of them so an upgrade to these MFCDs and an improvement for other 
backlit push buttons I do in the future will be to tweak the way I produce a cap and paint it and engrave it. Ultimately these MFCDs will be mounted into uh, an 18mm thick piece of MDF which will be the main fascia of the front dash. So at the top and bottom of these MFCDs you'll see there are some mounting holes that are on a protruded lip. So it should be at, at that point in the future that there'll just be a square cut out in the MDF and then from behind I can just simply put, the, put these panels through and just secure them in place. One thing I have found is that the standard exported view is definitely not as bright as what you see in the actual sim so if you look at the screen on the right there and we have a look at the camera view but then you compare that to the MFCD actually on the monitor in the top left of this screen you can see the one in the top left is a lot brighter and I think when picking out targets obviously the, the brighter the better so I do. I found it really handy to, to have added in the brightness button so I can adjust this to ensure I can pick targets out effectively. So with the target locked, let's fire on that. At this point the trajectory looks like it's following quite an odd path but it looks like it gets itself on target. Normally when releasing a weapon within a moment you're sort of turning away from the target and the MFCD is a way of really in viewing the impact and the damage and checking it hit as you wanted it to so um, I have found it really satisfying to use these and I really think it's a, a good addition to the sim pit. So in this video we've seen from the operation test that the MFCDs are operating the way they should do and it looks like I can go ahead and integrate them fully into the sim pit. For anyone interested in building one of these the next video in the series will look at the uh, design and construction in quite some detail. Thanks for watching.